Welcome to this Maker's Tale tech demo video update. My name is James, I'm making this game with my buddy Justin, who's doing the art. Today I'll be going through a bunch of the changes that have been made recently, um, in the past week or so since the last video. Um, straight off the bat we have new particle effects for upgrading structures. And there is new particle effects for adding and removing tiles as well. Uh, there's particle pools so that we can add heaps of these if we need and scales accordingly. Um, I updated to the latest nightly build of JMonkey and ended up breaking all my transparent shadows, which I haven't been able to fix yet. I haven't been able to devote the time to look into it. I've had a quick look but couldn't fix it, so it's on the to-do list at the moment. Uh, there's some new units floating around, which I'll talk about in a little while. Changing the, the user colour now affects more than just the cursor. It also affects the, the structures and units. Um, the units can have, well, and the structures can have a highlight map passed to them, which defines the areas which are going to be coloured. You can put any colour here, but there's just a few pre-selected ones to make it easier. The ambient occlusion filter has also had a big update. I, I got stuck writing to how that was working and sped it up and, and changed a lot of the parameters and it just looks a lot better now. Um, really lifts the look of the game, which wasn't working probably before. I've also added my twiddly knobs interface. Um, for rapid prototyping, it took me about half an hour to make, and it's already saved me about four hours. I can, with just a couple of lines of code, link it into to my shaders or, or any parts of the game really, so I can change their values during runtime, which has just sped up debugging so quickly, so much. It's been great. It's been a bunch of of network updates as well. Um, now the server is a bit more intuitive and communicates conditions and status. Um, there's a bit more user feedback as to, to what's going on, or it's a little bit hidden. There's now a hero tile, sorry, a hero spawn tile, so that uh, heroes can be placed on the map for gameplay. Something just wasn't in there before. enemy melee unit or enemy tank equivalent has received a fresh coat of paint or its first coat of paint um, and the rim light shader has made its way back into the engine it was absent for no good reason and I put it back in for highlighting and it seems to work quite well shader I developed a while ago there is the I integrated a cloth simulator just for the flag because I tried to, to animate it in Blender but I couldn't import those animations easily enough so it was actually a lot easier just to put in a, a simulator, a cloth simulator. I don't know if I'll use it for anything or if it will even stay in there but it's a fun little project. The Archer has also received a, a coat of paint. It's now shiny and sparkly. also added an, an actor menu um, so that actors can be made to patrol now rather than just move once they've spawned. Uh, they can be rotated just so they look better at the moment until the VAI is updated to make them face in the right directions. There's also a neat little camera follow function to, to lock onto a unit and, and follow them around. The enemy melee unit received a, a bunch of animation updates as well. Well, that's about it. Thanks for taking the time to watch our video. You can find out more about what we're doing at makerstail.com. 